Now, the government could face a rebellion by its MPs over calls for a new organisation to be set up to help the victims of the infected blood scandal. Thousands of people were infected with HIV and hepatitis C through contaminated blood products in the 1970s and 80s. Now, Tory backbenchers are expected to join with Labour, which has said it will support the creation of an organisation to administer compensation for those affected. That amendment is going to be debated in the House of Commons later today at around uh, six o'clock. Well, joining us now is Justine Gordon-Smith, whose father, Randolph, uh, learnt in 1994 that he'd been infected with hepatitis C and he died five years ago. Uh, Justine, thank you very much for being with us. I went through some of the politics of this uh, before um, you joined us, but just tell us about your father. He was a, a really decent man. He was a jazz musician. Uh, when he was infected, he was unable to pursue his career as an instrument, you know, pursue his career as a musician, rather. He lost his job, his health, his wife, his home, everything, and he was left to languish on benefits for 38 years. Then he was uh, chucked out into palliative care when he got cancer, and my sisters and I were abandoned to take care of him. So... Yeah. And you feel entirely let down by the government and governments that have known that this was a scandal since, as we said, since the 80s? Yeah, well, I mean, even before that, I mean, they knew that products were infected from the 1970s. And uh, I mean, I've done a lot of research into this on my own. And, uh, you know, I am part of the, the, the group of people who believe that our loved ones were used to test the infectivity of blood products in the development of Factory. And I don't understand why the government isn't asking the drug companies who benefited from all that research to pay for compensation, why they've not legislated for that. And they haven't, gone, of course, gone into to, to that particular detail, but they are, as we say, uh, an amendment's going to be tabled today looking to expand the compensation scheme. The government have already said they've made interim compensation payments to affect infected individuals and bereaved um, partners. But of course, it was your father, so you weren't part of that initial scheme. Uh, are you expecting that you will be part of a wider scheme? No, I, I, I fear the government are just going to long grasp this indefinitely. I mean, it's really interesting. They've provided support to one third of those of the infected uh, and 900 bereaved widows. So the inquiry have shown that um, there are still 2,000 estates of those that they infected who've never received, been compensated or received an interim payment or anything like that. So it's kind of, you know, you can't really say it's our answering the moral case to only compensate one third of victims. Mm. I mean, I guess in that where... That's where the politics comes in, doesn't it, Justine? Because if the government um, were to have a, a large rebellion on their hands in tonight's debate, that might force their hands to make sure that they do widen the scheme to, to bring in um, children and other people in the, um, who are bereaved um, from those that were infected with this contaminated blood. Well, I hope as many Conservative MPs as possible rebel against this. If you consider that the government... This Conservative government introduced the Administration of Estates Act in 1925, which said that the deceased determines who the beneficiaries of their estate are, not the government. And the Equalities Act, introduced by David Cameron, that said that all victims need to be treated with parity, yet this government is actually, again, ignoring its own legislation. I mean, I find it absolutely extraordinary, and I hope that all Conservative MPs, with a conscience, with constituents, in the same situation where they have been discounted. And one point I'd like to make is that if you allow a government to evade its accountability to those that it was responsible ultimately for killing, then what's to say, you know, maybe if we dealt with this years ago, we wouldn't have the COVID inquiry now. The government would have taken responsibility for its own injuries. And Justine, finally, we don't have loads of time left, but I, I presume that you guys have thought about how a compensation scheme would would work. You, you mentioned that, you know, you and your sisters were left bereft uh, and and having to be responsible for your father in, in his later years. How would how do you think a scheme would work, should work? 
Um, well, I think it should be exactly as Sir Brian recommended it. I mean, Sir Brian has spent five years carefully going through the evidence, carefully listening to each each sort of family's impact. And I mean, you know, what sort of government is this that it, it appoints a high court judge to make decisions for it, to look at the evidence and then completely ignores it? I mean, it's just extraordinary. So I think the compensation scheme should be exactly as Sir Brian recommended it in his second interim report and the government you know that's like it, you know it's a bit of a, a bit of a brutal analogy but it's kind of like saying to a serial killer you get to decide what the remedy is do you know okay justine gordon smith who uh, his father randolph um, was infected with blood uh, infected with contaminated blood and passed away five years ago I do appreciate you joining us and that debate as we said will begin in the comments at six o'clock this evening justine thank you thank you